Just over one week ago, Blackmagic debuted their brand new Pixis camera at NAB 2024. I tried this camera at the show and spent the next few days sitting with my thoughts on it in order to not rush my first impressions. This camera is interesting and it seems like it's caused quite the stir. Blackmagic finally did it. They made a box style camera, something that has been requested by a very vocal set of Blackmagic's user base for years. This box design came with quite a few notable and interesting design decisions. One design choice that seems to be a dividing line between people who visited Blackmagic's booth and reactions online is this built-in side display. I understand that there are many people out there who might find it annoying that in order to change your settings or get anything dialed in run and gun, you need to take the camera off and turn your head to this side LCD, making it not very ideal for handheld shooting. This is a perfectly reasonable point and I don't disagree with it being a potential pain point for many people. However, I think a lot of people might be missing the point as to whom this camera is intended for. Box style cameras are made to be built out. At a minimum, you are using an SDI monitor and top handle with cameras like this. On the point of controlling settings being annoying and inconvenient, I am not sure I agree that this is a huge issue. Iris will likely be changed on the lens if you use manual lenses, which I think many people do. ISO, shutter angle, and white balance each have a dedicated button. If you want optimal dynamic range performance, you should be setting your ISO for the day and just changing your exposure in other ways. If you shoot at a 180 degree shutter angle most of the time, you will not touch the shutter angle button outside of specific situations. White balance is probably going to be the setting that you change the most in a run and gun situation and using the side display to change this setting isn't required if you use this camera as intended. This side display seems serviceable as a menu system, since settings like your record mode, audio, monitor display, and output settings are all things you should set on your camera when you are prepping for your shoot and less so handheld on the fly. If you hate that this camera's display is located on the side, then perhaps you do not need a box style camera. If you want a camera with a built-in display that articulates out of the body, then you can buy the Blackmagic 6K full frame or any other full frame mirrorless camera available on the market. From a sensor and internals perspective, this is just the Blackmagic 6K full frame in a different body style. The point of a box style camera is to build it out, including using accessories such as an external monitor. The aspects of the physical design that I found strange were the lens mount options and the audio inputs. The single mini XLR port is on the front of this camera, which feels like a very awkward position, especially if you happen to run an adapter from a mini XLR to a full size XLR. Then your other option for a second audio channel is simply the 3.5 millimeter mic jack. For anyone who prefers to run their main source of audio directly into their camera, these inputs might be less than ideal. However, I'm sure third-party camera rig manufacturers will come up with solutions. Then there is the lens mount. It's not interchangeable, even though it sort of looks like it is. They are offering an L mount, EF mount, and PL mount version. And to me, that seems almost redundant because there isn't much benefit to the EF or PL version unless you hate using adapters and never plan on using any other types of lenses. The L mount version seems like the sensible choice because it's far more flexible and would also allow you to use a wide variety of adapters that have things like built-in ND filters. As for the rest of the IO, the Pixis has two CF Express type B slots that are hot swappable but cannot record to each other simultaneously. You also have the option of recording to an SSD if you prefer that. Power is handled by either a BPU battery or 12 volt DC port with the same locking connector that all other small Blackmagic cameras have had since the Pocket 4K. Lastly, we have a 12G SDI port, a timecode in for easy sync of sound or multi-camera shooting, and an ethernet port for use with Blackmagic's cloud services if you need that kind of thing. Before we get to my hands-on impressions of the Pixis, I just wanted to thank ASUS for sponsoring my trip to NAB 2024. They have recently released a wide range of ProArt PC components designed specifically with creators in mind. I was particularly impressed with their ProArt LC420 AIO CPU cooler because it both looks really elegant and it comes stock with Noctua's excellent performing NF814 industrial PPC 140 millimeter radiator fans, which should ensure really good cooling performance with all the latest generation Intel and AMD CPUs. They were 
also showing an entire pro art build at their booth and I think it looks classy without being over the top. You can check out more of ASUS's pro art line at the first link in the video description. During my initial hands-on experience at Blackmagic's booth, I found the Pixis heavier than I expected when rigged out with a top handle, Blackmagic's new EVF, a base plate, and a full-size cinema lens. This particular rig was also quite front heavy, but I think that would easily be solved with a BPU battery adapter that allows you to put on a V-mount or similar battery on the back to balance things out. Viewing angles on the side display were not amazing, but I don't think that's a huge deal. The monitor was quite bright, I had to turn it down to even see any detail in it on camera. Blackmagic had all the demo Pixis cameras fitted with their new Ursa Cine EVF, which is quite good, but I don't think it'll be a common pairing since the EVF itself is more than half the cost of this camera. I did ask Blackmagic directly if the Type-C port dedicated to the EVF on the front of the camera will ever be used as a display out for any other monitor. And while my Blackmagic rep could only 100% confirm that it is made for the EVF, I personally got the impression from him that they are actively working on other uses for this port coming in future accessory releases. So it'll be interesting to see if they come up with anything else. One noteworthy con that I already see with this camera, which is also a bit of an issue on the Blackmagic 6K full frame, is the fact that if you want to shoot at anything but 6K open gate, you are cropping in on the sensor instead of just getting oversampled footage. This is a bit of a shame and could be a deal breaker for some of you out there who do not want to shoot 6K B-RAW footage all the time. Overall, my first impression of this camera is that Blackmagic seems to have delivered on the form factor that was asked of them by their community. People wanted a box style camera with their color science, relatively simple menu, and professional I.O. I don't really see this as a run and gun user camera and it's not really meant to be. It's for the indie filmmaker or film enthusiast who wants a camera they can rig out exactly how they want. This is the kind of person who probably has a lot of the necessary accessories like a monitor and focus system from other cameras they have owned. For newcomers to professional video looking to buy their first professional camera, this looks like a solid first starting point priced reasonably at $3,000. I can see this camera being a good platform to learn a lot of the professional camera practices as you move up in your career. I'm excited to review this camera in the future and properly test it on an actual project. But for now, I think that if you like what you see on paper and you think you will enjoy the customization this box form factor offers, this might be a good camera for you. This camera isn't groundbreaking, but it offers something people have been saying that they want from Blackmagic. I will admit that personally, I think it would have been really cool if Blackmagic also released a 6K Super 35 millimeter version of this camera, more similar to the Pocket 6K Pro, which has ProRes internal recording and built-in ND filters but no camera is without compromise. Thank you guys so much for watching.